Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Darren. I'm an outdoor photographer based in beautiful country of Ireland. And I'll take you on some fantastic journeys to amazing locations, seascape, woodland, and the likes on my channel. If it's your first time on my channel, I'd really love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me on my adventures. Now, today you join me in a location called Rocky. Bay, and it's a location that I visited many, many times before. It's a location that you're always guaranteed to get some great shots. It changes every single time the tide comes in or out. So you could end up with sandy on one tide and completely rocky on the other. And that opens up a huge amount of foreground interests, which will always be different no matter what visit you arrive to. Add in some beautiful waves and some nice light and you're guaranteed some epic shots. So it's no wonder why Rocky Bay is a favorite of mine and also a favorite of other local photographers. Oh, before I forget, thank you very, very much to everybody who has recently joined the channel. And more importantly, thank you to all the fantastic feedback and support that I received from my video from last week. It's been amazing to kind of read every single comment that's there and it's really encouraging as well to know that I'm on the right track. I've actually not as far along in regards to the development of what I wanted to do for the website for this week. I've kind of been distracted but more about that in a moment but I've now finalized the covers that I want to have for my location guides. I'll actually give you a look at them here now. Do they really intrigue you? Do they pique your interest would you want to be able to click in them i'd love to let let me know in the comments below but i've got those done now i've got one of the books completely finished and i've got two others that as well that are both half done one is all the, the text has been done it just needs corresponding images and then the other has all the images and half the text done so i'm nearly there in relation to getting them done i was all gung-ho at the beginning of this week however i got distracted and I've been distracted by something which is really, really interesting and beneficial as well to me. So yes, guess what? I'm sitting in my own van. Yeah, a camper van. And it's something that I've wanted for a long time, but it really kind of intensified uh, in the last number of months, mainly after I was bitten by the bug with Dermid. And myself and Dermid, my wingman, had had many an adventure in his van. I had three great adventures last year and all made possible and all enjoyed as much because of the freedom that a camper van can give you. So I did a lot, a lot of searching over the last number of months to try and find what was going to be the right van for me. Would I go for a large style van? No, of course not, because that wouldn't be very indicative for me to get into location areas for photography. So then I said, okay, will I go and I get a ready-made camper van? Now a ready-made camper van is extremely expensive. And besides being expensive, they're already set up and they may not necessarily be set up for what I want them for, for what I want to put within a van. But also I want to be able to go somewhere on my own and take all the adventures that a van can bring. You can arrive to your sunrise location at sunset, so you're ready to rock and roll the following morning. You can bring everything that you need with you, so you're not going to be missing out on anything. And also, you know, in an afternoon, you can hang out in your van. You're not going to be exposed to the elements. If it's raining, you can shoot through the, the doors of the van. So it has a huge amount of possibilities and I was really excited now to get my own. So I decided I'm going to go and I'm going to do a van myself. How am I going to do a van myself? Well, I'm going to buy a standard van and I'm going to do it up. Now I consumed hours and hours and hours of video footage online and tutorials online and how to convert a van into a camper van. So to convert a van, number one, you have to strip it out. So it's good that you get, it's important that you get a very good baseline van. Then number two, you've got to make sure that there's no rust. So you've got to prime and seal everything then because if you have any rust on the actual shell of the van, you're going to have a problem thereafter. After that, then you need to soundproof it because you're in a metal cage. Then after that, what you need to do is um, insulate it. And you have two different types of insulation as well. You've got a foam and you've also a thin version. And then you need to carpet it so that it actually is nice looking. And you're not looking at all these um, functional materials as well. Now I consumed a lot and I knew exactly what I needed to do. I had all the list of items that I was going to order. I had all the list of items that I needed to be able to complete the job. And I said, okay, I need to find my right van. And I was really, really excited, but also 
a bit nervous and apprehensive about the daunting task that I had ahead of me to be able to convert a van. But nonetheless, I had all the list of all the items that I need to get, all the tools that I need to get, and all the videos that I found the most helpful, that I had bookmarked, that I could go back to again for cheat sheets when I was actually about to do it. So I set off then to find what was the van that I was going to get. So the different types of vans that I was looking for were potentially an ex-fleet van, um, which had come to the end of its life in a short service within a fleet, or a tried and tested, honest, hardworking van that had been the workhorse for a sole trader or craftsperson or something like that, having carried many loads up and down the breadth of Ireland. Um, some of them loads may have leaked, other loads may have been heavy and would have hurt the van. So I was hoping that I'd get a van that would deserve a new lease of life for a more relaxed way to actually be and convert that then into my own van, my camper van. So I narrowed it down to two types of vans. So the first was a Ford Transit Custom, which is a very, very popular van for uh, camper van conversions, and there's a lot of them out there. And the second that I wanted to go for was a VW Transporter. Again, really, really popular from a camper van point of view, and again, there's a lot of them out there. So I started searching and searching on all of the car for sale websites, started to set up some reminders, started checking my reminders each and every day. And then in the last week, it really started to intensify. Now, this week, on Tuesday of this week, so today is Saturday, on Tuesday of this week, I traveled to Dublin specifically to look at a van. And unfortunately, that didn't pan out. There was a couple of areas that I needed to get fixed. There weren't any diva requests. There were just pretty much basic requirements for a van to work. But unfortunately, the dealer didn't want to invest that money and decided that to not ring me back, even though he knew I was interested in the van. But anyhow, his uh, loss. So that has been, that was one entire day traveling up and down to Dublin, which is a waste of time as far as I was concerned. Then Thursday morning, my good old buddy and wingman Dermot sent me a message, check out this van. And I checked out this van, immediately contacted the owner and something within me said, okay, this is my van. So I wasn't talking to a dealer who was just looking at a transaction. I was talking to somebody who was passionate about what they had created. It was their van. Now, like I said, I had all this work that I was really, really forecasting that I had to do. And I'd set myself up to be able to do this work. However, the van that I found had it all done already. This was all been done professionally. So the whole van had been, again, soundproofed, insulated, carpeted, ceilings done, floor done, and also on top of that, it had the first round of bedding already put in, which is a, cur a couch. So the couch I'm sitting on here also converts into a double size bed. And that's exactly what I had wanted it to be. And that's the level that I wanted it to be at. On top of that as well, there's curtains that have been put in all the way around. You've got LED lighting that's here as well. So it's again, ideally set up. Underneath here is really, really good from a storage point of view. So I'll have space for my camera gear, for my tripods, for cooking, for uh, cleaning, for clothing, for bedding, everything is all gonna be underneath here. And then that leaves an entire side over here completely blank. So I think for me, it was absolutely perfect. Now I'll tell you a funny story and this is a true story and it's not made up. So I had no transport on the Thursday. So I got a train up to Dublin and I had contacted and arranged everything with the owner. His name is Jerry. He arranged to meet me at the train station. And when I arrived at the train station, I met him. My first impression of the van was, okay, this is exactly how I thought it was going to be. When I opened the van, however, Jerry blew me away because he not only had come to pick me up, but he'd also bought me a bottle of water and a sandwich because he said, there's no food on the train. I knew he'd be hungry. It's a long day. That to me was the first thing said, this is a good guy. Now I went and had a look at the van, had a look around the van, did a drive in relation to the van, uh, asked Jerry questions and the whole way through, he was able to tell me everything that he had done. And this really was his baby. So it was really something that I was excited to be able to take from him from all the work that he had done. It's everything that I had wanted to bring my own van if I'd gotten a basic van up to, and now it's all been done for me. Saves me probably around about a month of work, but it also gives me an opportunity to be able to get out with the van a lot, lot quicker. So I had said, you know what, Jerry, thanks very much. We'll have a deal done. And I wanted to do electronic transfer into his bank account. Unfortunately, when you set up a new user, I presume because of anti-money laundering, you can transfer a huge amount of money to one individual person. So it's limited to a thousand euro per day for the first two days, and then you can put through the full transaction. Now I must have a very trustworthy face or 
part of me is actually you know oozing that sort of feeling because i said to jerry what do you want to do here jerry i can transfer a thousand to you right now i can do a thousand to you tomorrow and then i can do the balance the day after and because I had traveled up on the train, it was now going to be either do that and get a train back down and come back up again in two days or take the van away. And that's precisely what happened. I took the van away, even though Jerry hadn't got one cent from me. I took his pride and joy and I drove it back down the road to Cork. And it was a fantastic drive actually, all the way back down because the van, like I said, has been really, really taken care of by Jerry but it definitely reinstates the fate in humanity that I have. And fair play to him for doing that. He didn't know who I was. I know I'm a nice guy, but he didn't know who I was. But he took an, uh, a punt on me and allowed me to be able to drive down the road in his pride and joy back to Cork. And he actually hadn't received one cent because it still took a while for the first transfer to clear from my account to his account. But that really, <laughs> you couldn't make this story up, but it's absolutely true. So fair play to you, Jerry. And I've been talking to him every day since, of course, because he wants to make sure that he gets his full payment, but I actually haven't paid him in full for the van uh, yet. However, I am really, really thankful for him that he allowed me to be able to take his own pride and joy away. So that's what's kept me busy over the last week. So unfortunately, I haven't had an opportunity to record any photography content, but what's going to happen next is really, really exciting. So I'm going to take my van on its first road trip. And of course, I'm going to go with my wingman, Dermot. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the west coast of Ireland. And we're going to go visit an island which has been made really, really famous now because of a movie called The Banshees of Inisherin, and it's Ackle Island. And I'm so excited, number one, to go see this beautiful place, but number two, to take my van here on its first road trip and really, really, really bed it in. It's going to be an exciting time now with this. It's going to open up so many new opportunities. And who knows, you know, I might have a few different pieces about the van and van life as time will go on, but I'm so excited now to finally have this game changer under my backside and I'm really looking forward now as well to be able to get out and record content and that's one of the advantages actually that I think of the van here is that it's also going to allow me to have many different recording angles for when I want to record content here in the back of the van and I think it's something that I'm really really excited now to be able to see what can I do how can I elevate my photography content on my channel so yeah thank you very much for joining this quick update episode again unfortunately no photography but we're going to make up for that and we're going to make up for that in spades so tune in next week when you'll see me travel to the beautiful west coast of Ireland, onto Ackle Island, and also around about Connemara as well, we're going to go look at as well. We're going for a number of days, and I'm really, really excited. So if it's your first time on my channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time in my new van, Schlangefall.